about the achievements that I see, in a way it's not surprising, but to know about it from the reports I used to hear from what was published from Bilal Muslim Mission, or I hear from others, is a different thing from actually meeting the people who are the fruits of his hard work. Whenever and wherever we started the madrasa, we started the preaching, we started to send Ahlul Bayt's message. Really, people without any problem, they accept it. Yako na changamoto wa maisha, mimi ni mikubali mwenye kwa liza yangu, kuwa mwanafunzi bola wa shia, mazebi yote ya shia, ni mikubali. Wanafunzi bora wa Albright. They do everything by by iman, that, that level of iman. So, considering those factors and their lifestyle, uh, they need quite assistance. Mm -hmm. I'm Sayyid Muhammad Rizwi, my father, the late Marhum Al-Allama Sayyid Sayyid Akhtar Rizwi, was the pioneer of tabligh and missionary activities in Africa, uh, and he is the one who initiated the process which formally uh, was known as Bilal Muslim Mission. And today I'm on this journey to visit one of the centers, which is the fruits of his work in the early days. My late father, Allah Masih Sayyid Akhtar, is me. May Allah shower his blessings upon his soul. Um, he originally came from northeastern part of India. Our family, uh, as the name says, are from Sadat Radhavi. Our um, ancestors had migrated from Iran about 400 years ago to India. And they settled down in this area which is now known as Bihar. My grandfather himself was an alim and a tabib at the same time. It's interesting that in India there were many ulama who would also uh, study ilm al tib to become doctors, uh, practicing herbal medicine, the traditional way of you know uh, treating uh, illness of the people. And this was one way that they would also support themselves as well as do their religious um, you know, activities. And so my grandfather um, himself uh, had studied in one of the uh, famous Hausa in, Lek in uh, Lucknow, which is a major Shia center in northern India. And um, so already my late father had kind of a role model for himself uh, and he continued in that path. So it's not only my grandfather, but even the uh, maternal grandfather of my father. So my grandmother's father was also a tabib and a very learned person, uh, especially uh, he had a very good library. And according to what my father writes in his own autobiography, that during the childhood they, they used to spend their summer vacation at their uh, maternal grandfather's home. And one of the uh, good times that he had was spending in his personal library. And this is the time when he was already into the religious studies. Um, 
but it was in that house of his maternal grandfather that this dream of going to a remote place uh, to serve the Mazhab al Bayt actually materialized in a sense that one of the things he used to read quite a lot was a journal uh, published those days um, and we are talking about you know uh, 30s and 40s um, which was published from Lucknow uh, from a Hausa who used to send uh, preachers and mobilirin to different parts of India and few of them would even end up in Africa where they would come and do tabligh to the uh, Koja Shia Isna Shari community in this part of the world and these mobilirin would actually send back their reports to their uh, institution in Lucknow who would, which will be published in the journal that they had and those reports and reading them actually was very interesting for him and it kind of motivated him uh, to try to see if he can also you know when he grows up and finishes his education uh, go into that um, similar journey uh, to a remote place Koja community here uh, who were part of the committee which would uh, go and look for uh, capable scholars in India and Pakistan to invite them to come to East Africa um, to basically you know help the community in the spiritual method and to guide the community and it was through that process that they actually approached uh, my late father in late 50s and based on that invitation, he came to Africa first time in 1959. Um, this was a very new journey for him, uh, but it is connected to his dream of his early teens, you know, when he used to look at the reports of other Mubalirin who had come earlier to Africa. and. Um, so he, he, tra he traveled those days from Bombay to Dar es Salaam um, by sea and that's almost a two weeks journey um, and he came here and from Dar es Salaam he um, traveled to a city in the southern parts of uh, Tanzania. It's actually there's the same direction we are going. Um, this road will actually end up to the city of Lindi. Although his first uh, journey um, to Lindi was by plane. And uh, it's there that he served the community for about two or three years. I was just three years old when we came he went back to India and then brought the family. The first visit he came alone. And after about six months or a year, he went back to bring us. And I was three, three years old uh, when we came uh, to Lindy. And uh, recently when I was looking at his diary of those days to prepare his uh, biography, it's interesting, and this is an important point to keep in mind that when he came to Africa, nobody had asked him that you are going to be dealing mostly with the Koja Shia Isna Shari community. But maybe you should also think about spreading the word of Ahlul Bayt, the Mazhab of Ahlul Bayt among the Africans. Because this was not done before by anyone. There were Shia uh, communities. Uh, in all major cities of uh, East Africa um, 50 years before that. And he realized that, you know, the ulama who had been coming in the past never talked about this issue of spreading the word of Ahlul Bayt 
and the message of the madhab to others. There was no inclination in the community itself. And so it was not an easy task just to start it and get support from the community. But he studied this structure and he realized they have this system here among the Koja community that the local Jamaats are all affiliated with the federation of this region. And they are the one actually who um, guide the local Jamaats. And so this is where he uh, started identifying the people in the leadership who would be, you know, accepting this idea of tabligh among the uh, indigenous people. It's in early uh, 60s that he, my father moved from uh, Arusha to Dar es Salaam. And it was in the leadership of the Dar es Salaam Jamaat that have, he found more willingness uh, as far as you know, tabligh among the indigenous people is concerned. And so he prepared a draft for a resolution which can be presented to the general uh, body of the Dar es Salaam Jamaat. It was uh, approved there to be sent further as a resolution to the Federation of the Koja Shia Ishnashri Jamaats of East Africa in the three uh, annual uh, conference which was held in 1964 in Tanga. And that's where that resolution was adopted. Uh, and that's how officially uh, Bilal Muslim Mission came to exist. So this is the official beginning of the institution known as Bilal Muslim Mission. There were two branches open, one in Tanzania registered here and one in Kenya.
Haina shaka yoyote na kama mtu aliwahi kuona Maulana akiona picha hii basi tunahesabu tunaye Maulana na kwa vile katuachia juhudi na katuachia watoto watoto tunasema auladu sadaha tunasema alhamdulillah Maulana tunaye eh naingia kuongea sina nikukaribishe labda mgeni wangu au wageni wetu mzungumze na waume wetu tulokuwa nao mbele yetu hapa fadhili just uh, let me emphasize on one hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> that we are all part of the same tree. Where he says that Islam is shajaratun. Ana asluha. Where the Prophet himself says that I am the, the foundation of it. And Fatima is the branch of that. And Ali is the implant on that tree and that branch. Are the fruits of this tree. And then he says something for each one of us. The leaves of that tree are those who love the family of Ahlul Bayt. And so this tree of Islam, the tree of the Shayyu, will always stand strong. Yes, seasons will come. Sometimes we will have many, many leaves, warak, good colors. Sometimes the colors will fade. Sometimes in winter the the leaves will die, but then new ones will come up. But the tree will always survive. And we are basically the leaves of that tree. Inshallah, with the villa of Ahlul Bayt, love of the Ahlul Bayt, commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, this deen and mazhab, even in this part of the world, in Rufiji, inshallah, will continue and become stronger and stronger and stronger, inshallah. This is the first time I have come. I think when my father used to visit, I was in Iran at that time. I was 15 when I left Dar es Salaam. So this is the first time I'm coming to this part of, the, of Tanzania. And may inshallah, give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give tawfiq that this will not be the last visit, inshallah. I was actually uh, 15 when I left to go to Iran for my studies. Um, so I didn't get the opportunity that much to be part of his extensive uh, travels. Uh, but a little bit that I know and I can remember uh, is that he used to interact with people like one of them. He would make them feel uh, comfortable and not feel like a foreigner. <clears throat> he would even sit down and eat with them, would not hes hesitate to do that. Um, and uh, even the very first uh, madrasa which started by Sheikh Muhammad Ali Bunga, Bum, the, the one who was originally from the same area as Ikwiriri, was a very simple hut. But he didn't have any problem in even going there and be part of that process in order to convey the message of uh, Ahlul Bayt to the people. What <laughs> Here the fire kazi kuba wakati ye maneno moja litua kweli alileta athal kubwa sana alisema wakati marhum rahmatullahi ta'ala ala sayyida di kufa ye alihisi kama ye alihisi kama sisi ikutuku yati kwa hiyo historia ya ushia sisi ndo tumianzia alafu wengine wamefuatia wakati wa marehemu mzee Ali Ngongabule tulikutana naye wakati nipo Kigoma 
alinifahamisha kwamba chanzo cha kuwa ushia ilitokana na yeye kuwa ni fundi simu katika uwaji wa fundi simu akaenda kutengeneza simu alipangwa kwa Said Akhtar Rizvi wakati anatengeneza akamkuta Maulana anasoma Qur'ani yeye akashtuka ah Wahindi tunawajua baniani leo inakuwaje na Qur'an basi akaanza kumuuliza wakaanza mazungumzo wakasema mimi na shehe wangu Muhammad Ali Ngongabule ana shule yake hapo nyuma Kautar alipokwenda huyu ndo shehe wayo mzeali huyu mzeali Ngongabule kukutana na Maulana ndio wakaanzisha Bilali Muslim Mission of Tanzania mwalimu wa kwanza darasani ndio yeye mzee Ngongabule nyumbani kwake hapo nyuma na ndiye mtu ambaye aliingia Shia moja kwa moja wa kwanza kwa sababu mzee Ali alikuwa ni maamuma wa huyu mzee Ali Ngonda alikuwa ni maamuma wa mzee Ngongabule kwa hiyo yule alikuwa kama kiunganishi lakini huyu yeye ndo akawa mshia wa kwanza Afrika na kutokana na ualimu wake wakapatikana kina marehemu Shengurangwa marehemu Shemahanaka kwenda kusoma Irani mpaka wakina Shia Balasef mikononi mwa mzengo Ngabule kwa hiyo jicho la kwanza ni hapa Rufiji sisi wandengeleko tumepokea ushia hii ni jitihada zetu za watu wa Ifulili baada kuupokea ushia tusambaze na maeneo mengine kaanza babu yetu mzengo Ngabule na Nzeali na sisi tunafatia lakini wote sisi ni matunda ya Maulana Said Said Akhtarizwi yeye ndo muasisi wa ushia kwa waafrika so very initially when the work started he selected some uh, young people about five of them and they studied the initial uh, curriculum of the hosa as far as the muqaddamat and the language is concerned arabic language um, and in this uh, my father was directly involved as well as another colleague of him marhum uh, agha mehdi who is from an iranian background whose ancestors came to zanzibar more than you know uh, for three or four generations ago and uh, there was also an african uh, sheikh by the name of sheikh muhammad ali um, so they trained these young people and they selected five of them uh, to go and study in Najaf. Those days Najaf was the main prominent house of the Shia world. And this is in 1968. And so five of them were sent to uh, Najaf. My father had already traveled there and made arrangements uh, with uh, the late Ayatollah al Uzman Sayyid Muhsin al Hakim and through his office. Uh, so they went there unfortunately they couldn't stay long there because uh, the Ba'as party came, came to power and this is the days of Hassan al-Bakr and they started uh, expelling the foreign students from Najaf most of the Iranian and Afghani students were thrown out uh, this is where these African students uh, found themselves in, in difficulty so my father then had uh, even some uh, contacts with uh, uh, Imam Musa Sadr in Lebanon. And he says, uh, he asked uh, Imam Musa Sadr if you have some facility for education, a Hausawi program, where they can go now until we find them a more permanent uh, location. And that's where they were transferred to Sur in Lebanon, which is in the southern part of Lebanon. Uh, but there also there was a lot of uh, tension because of the influx of Palestinian uh, refugees who had come from Jordan to 
Lebanon, there was uh, fights between the Palestinian and the Israelis. Bombing used to happen very frequently in that region. So these students wrote to my father, if we want you to, if you would like to see us alive, please move us somewhere else, <laughs> because it's becoming very dangerous here. Uh, this is where he was able to then contact um, one of the prominent Maharaj in Qum of those days, Ayatollah Sharif Madari, uh, and got his support in this matter. And they were transferred from Lebanon to Iran, to Qum. Uh, and th this was actually a very important step in establishing uh, the roots of Tabligh among the indigenous African people. As per my experience in and sitting with the ulamas and going with the different countries, I can say Tanzania is the best part for the tabligh of Mazhab Ahl al-Bayt alayhimu salatu wa salam. For the tabligh, unfortunately why I, when I joined in the Bilal, I saw the situation of the Mubalaghin. The Mubalaghin level was very low and very low level, but they were doing wonderful job as per they can do. Then we thought, no, it is not possible to succeed. We have to prepare our own Mubalaghin. Then we started the Hausa. It was the first Hausa in Africa for that level which Alhamdulillah Jamatul Mustafa, the University of the Iran, after completing five years of our students, they provided an advanced diploma certificate for us, for our students. And also we started public in different angles for the villages. When I started the Bilal in Tanga, we had only four centers in Bilal Tanga branch. But after we worked very hard, we started one by one. But our system, first we were sending the Muballigh for the villages, which one he was working the near villages. And uh, every Thursday, every Friday, they were going there, sitting with the people, advising them, preaching them. After that, people got interest. For the, to know Mazhab Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salatu was salam. Slowly, slowly they started to come in our mosque, in our centers. In our, they started to send their children in our centers. After that, they requested us, please can you come in our village and start tabligh, start madrasa there. Now we are ready. Alhamdulillah, we got the opportunity and then we started. But... Mm -hmm. First, we started the renting of the press for madrasa. A mosque, we didn't build a madrasa, we didn't buy the land, but we started to hire or lend the, to, to rent the land, two rooms, three rooms, one room for teacher, two rooms for madrasa, one for girls, one for boys, and we started. One by one, in seven years, I have, uh, I was working in the Bilal Tanga, then we got 25 centers from the four, these 25 centers. And Alhamdulillah, we got many students, we got many Mominins. Around uh, in Tanga, I got, we got around uh, 900 families. You know, he did not work like the missionaries, Christian missionaries. There was no charity program, there was no employment after he became Shia, nothing. You know, his work was only to convey the message. 
And those who accept, accepted it, accepted it without any expectation of material gain from him. And I think that is difficult to really. Although we cannot deny the economic uh, and the charity element of that, that we had to take care of the people. Uh, but I think that was the, the purity of the act, which was very important. That those who came in, came in without expecting anything, uh, as far as material gain is concerned. <laughs> kuwa mwanafunzi bora wa Shia madhabi yote ya Shia nimekubali mwanafunzi bora wa Albait when they accept Shiaism and when they accept the, uh, the religion of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam they they are keen to learn more with their poor quality of life and their standard of understanding if you compare those factors and, the, uh, and their niya, their iman, I believe they need more assistance, more development. And uh, in that factor, we have to uplift their standard of living, make them independent, so that they can, they can learn more, they can uh, practice Comfortable in a comfortable manner, and they can spread from there. And I, I have witnessed, I have experienced that those convert Shias are more effective in in spreading Shiaism, in spreading Islam, uh, and they do everything by by iman, that, that level of iman. So. Considering those factors and their lifestyle, uh, they need quite assistance. They need assistance up, uh, to upgrade their lifestyle, to, to even to facilitate them with the references. And, uh, you know, for the basic requirements as well, like food, like shelter, eh? water, masjid, centers, they are living in a in a very poor condition as we went there and you saw how how things are mm -hmm. Nimeolewa akipatikana kama anavyopatikana kama wazetu wengine na hata tubo tumefungua mradi wa kulima tunalima kama kipindi kama cha cha sasa hivi inabidi maji tunatoa juu huko tunayapeleka chini bondeni kwenda kumwagia kutumia mkono hatuna usaidizi aina chochote kusema labda sijui tuna mambo mengine ya kutusaidia kumwagia labda sijui na mashine hatuna tunatumia nguvu kulima pia tunatumia nguvu hata yule mume wangu ana kazi ya kazi yake pia ya nguvu kukata mkaa ajaliyo kule akate mkaa Atoke tajiri ya chome ya uze, nipo tunapata liziki. Kama tunapata liziki kwa hivu, na bidu kutafutiri. Na niyo kazi kwa, kwa sukuma, kama hivu kuenda kwa saidi ya kulima au kufuna mitama, nipo na sisi jioni, tujia kupata liziki. Hata usomaji pia mimonye na jisikia tabu, kwa hivu wainu kusu, mazingira hitu, mabovu, watani mba hitu, ya taka makijia mvua hizi, mvua kidogo tu, kuwa tunaloa ndani, Na watoto wao pia na shindwa nilale na ovitu, wangiwa na ala hapa chini, wangiwa na ala huko mwana kwa watoto wangiwa shakuwa wakubwa. Na wangiwa mwode po dasa la saba, mwode dasa la sita, mwode dasa la tano, na wangiwa mwode po dasa la pili, wangiwa mwode po dasa la kwanza. Wawili bado, wajanta shule. Na wata kwenye ulalali unakuwa, na shida shida kusuma zingira etu magumi. Na hii nyumba ya mnaweka? 
mnajenga vipi sisi hatujui mnajenga vipi natumia hela nyingi na kuna chumba ngapi kwenye nani nyumba nyingi hii nyumba kuna vyumba viwili kimoja hiki hapo kimoja hicho huko na hapa ndo sehemu ya kupikia na masikio yangu ndo haya unayokuta hapa na vyombo vyangu vya ndani na plastiki ndo haya hapa mawili tuna beseni langu moja masikio yangu manne na nyumba hii yenyewe mnajenga vipi hii nyumba tunatumia kuchimba udongo chini kwenda kukata miti wenyewe porini na kubeba kichwani kuleta hapa na mnapata shida nyingi sana kufanya hivyo ni na mbali zaidi kutoka hapa kuna kutafuta miti isipokuwa isipokuwa ina, ina, inabidi na kutafuta miti na makuti porini na hatuna usafiri ambapo wa kutusaidia na yote na je katika mwezi katika kuishi maisha yenu hapa na nahitaji hela ngapi katika mwezi ili uweze kuishi maisha yenu e, kusema hela ngapi hivi maana ma, matumizi tunayotumia atuwapigie mahesabu muda mwingine kutwa mmoja atakapata tu kutwa mzee atakapata ila shilingi elfu moja maana shilingi elfu moja na watoto ngai kwa ndogo lakini kwa hivyo ndio nishapata 1000 inabidi nilazimishe ili itoshe kwa siku moja si labda si labda inatosha kutosha haitoshi sikuwa kwa hivyo ndio wali ndio nishatafuta kutwa mzima nishapata ila shilingi elfu moja inabidi hapo itoshe sitoshe inabidi itosheleze na hiyo hela mnayotafuta mnaitafuta yani mnaifanyia kazi kitu fulani au mnaitafutia vipi la hiyo naitafuta kama hizi mna wangu anaweza kwenda kwenye tenda aenda kumsaidia mtu kusukuma mzigo wake au kumsaidia kazi yake wanaweza ila kapata shilingi elfu moja au mimi mwenyewe naweza kwenda kwa sukuma kwenda kuwasaidia kuvuna mtama kama kipindi cha saa hizi nikapata ila 1000 au 700 kama hiyo mzangu kule kapata 1000 mimi kapata 700 huwa tunachanganya tunapata mambo ya kula alafu wakati unalima ile mm. matunda unayopata au chochote unachopata mnakula wenyewe au mnaenda kuiuza ili mpate hela ni yale matunda huo mavuno yanakuwa madogo maana yake kazi ni kubwa lakini mavuno yanakuwa madogo tunatumia kula wenyewe maana yake hayatoshelezi na kwenda kuuza matunda kipato ni kidogo kutokana na hali zetu ngumu na matatizo mengine au changamoto unayopata ni nini kama labda tuseme umeme au na maji machafu au vitu kama hivi na oh, umeme hapa hatuna na maji tunayo safi hapo nyumba ya pili sio ya kwetu started economic upliftment schemes with them uh, we see the uh, the environment what they can do there for instance there is a place in kigoma katumbi uh, it's uh, you have to cross uh, uh, the lake tanganyika to to reach there so those people there they they are fishermen so the only economic upliftment scheme that you can use there is fishing so we we, we have tried and we are trying to to facilitate them with the fishing nets and we give them uh, as an as a capital to start with so that they they can be independent and it depends on uh, on the centers for instance there are centers they work together they can work as a community and there are in, in there are some centers we have effective uh, members who individually you can you can uplift them so it depends on how to to give them a, a economic empowerment that way waislamu tunaishije tunaishi sisi kwa njia ya kilimo kilimo eh naam eh huwa masama ngapi tuna tunakuya tuna, tunalima masama ngapi tunalima zao lipi eh tunalima kiasi ya masaa sita masaa nne tunalima asubuhi masaa mawili tunalima jioni okay eh uh. uh-huh. mazao gani eh mazao tunalima hapa mpunga mahindi uh-huh. Eh wakati mwingine nilikuwa bostani ya matigiti. Tunalima matigiti ya nam. Eh. Na hayo mazao mnafanyia biashara au ni mazao ya chakula? Eh mazao ya biashara kama vile matigiti, mabamia uh-huh. yanakuwa mazao ya biashara ya chakula ndio kama hivyo mahindi na mpunga. Ala. Lakini kama tunapata kwa wingi basi na tunafanya biashara. Tunafanya biashara. Eh tukipata kiasi cha haja basi tunakuwa tunakula tu. Mm. 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 Mm.
huwa tunajenga vibanda vidogo vidogo kwa ajili ya kuweza kukaa katika ulinzi kwa mfano kama ile kule dungu linaona lile eh yani zile ni nyumba rasmi ni kwamba wanakaa watu kwa wakati ule wa mavuno wasije ndege kuja kula au siku kuja wanyama poli kwa tunajenga mabanda kama hayo ndo mazingira yetu yalivyo Ah, <laughs> Mm. wanaume kwa wanawake au wanaume kwa wanawake na zaidi mm. wanawake na kina... sinafanya kazi zingine yeah. okay. kwa hiyo mnasaidiziana yeah. yeah. kuna mama anaweza kawa hao shambani yeah. we, baba ukawa na shulika gongoni kwa mambo mengine maana yake mkiamua kulima wote kama wakati wa kilimo yeah. amuwezi kupata chakula au amuwezi kupata mahitaji mengine yeah. um, mpaka wakati wa mavuno ndio mnaweza mkafanya kazi wote kwa pamoja lakini katika kipindi cha kulima mavuno bado basi inabidi wanawake wana asilimia kubwa kwa wao ndio wenye kulima. wanalima wanakuwa na asilimia kubwa kwa wanalima wa wanawake. Kwa kweli wanawake wetu kwenye tabligh wamo. Naam, kwenye tabligh. Kwenye kwenye kusaidiana kiuchumi wamo. Hapa naam. Kuwaendeleza watoto maisha wamo. Mashaallah, mashaallah. Watoto wetu Yaani wanawake wetu wana, 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 wana kazi nyingi sana. Wana kazi nyingi sana. Kwa mfano naona asubuhi watakuwa shambani. Naona kutoka saa nane hadi saa kumi watakuwa wanapata masomo ya dini. Masomo ya dini eh? Eh, kutoka saa kumi, saa kumi na moja na tena shambani. Kwa hiyo muda wa kupumzika wanakuwa kwenye saa tano, sita, saba, nane basi masaa yao hayo. Katika masaa kumi na mbili wanapumzika masaa manne. Mm. Na hii ndio ya maji ya kunywa. Eh ndo na kunywa kwa ajili ilooni pakikauka basi wanaamua ku. There was a mu'min who was in a hardship and uh, he was ready to do anything uh, for work. So and his uh, position he had a, a wife and four kids. Uh, kids were into the position of going to the school but uh, unfortunately no financial backup so uh, you know so he came and asked that i don't want uh, money from you what i want is a skill or something to advise that it will it will give me relief forever so we guided him with uh, driving and uh, we bought a tricycle uh, here they call it uh, boda boda tuk tuk something like that which can carry uh, cargo and assist him in transportation so he started after driving lessons he got the driving license he started and we monitored him for six months and and he was so uh, eager he was so so much loyal in his work that within 8 months he gave us the money back and he said now i am able uh, now i am comfortable in uh, in taking care of my family and he started his life from there so this is one uh, that i can i can say there was another lady uh, you know Uh, this african families have a taboo of having more than one wife so there was a lady there shia and she had a she was a, i think a, uh, the first wife or the, or the second wife yeah so the lady had a similar uh, economic problems children at home no going to school and uh, we uh, she asked for, she always come and ask for for the school fees for for food for like that we we tried to talk to her and uh, ask that how 
how we can we can make her independent so we came up with a thing that she, where the area that she was living there was the area had an electricity so we gave her the idea to have a deep freezer so that she can have cold water and uh, ice to sell so she started that business and alhamdulillah from that business she she started earning little and now she is self sufficient so we try to see the area the environment the community where it belongs what are their needs so we advise them uh, accordingly so that they they can have uh, uh, their sustain, sustenance we have uh, uh, two kinds of uh, sponsorships uh, and it channelized through africa federation obvious uh, there is zainabia child sponsorship scheme that deals with uh, uh, all levels uh, uh, primary level and there is a portion of amount that we give them and we pay direct to the schools for their upliftment so that the child doesn't suffer in studying so they be comfortable they know that the school paid uh, the school fees have been paid so they they be comfortable and, and learn and we have also a bless a scheme whereby we target the the uh, uh, the students for the higher education so we see and and we assess accordingly and uh, we, we try to assist as much as we can uh, from these two schemes so we have two schemes there is a zcss and there is a bless well as far as you know how do i feel about the achievements that i see in a way it's not surprising but to know about it from the reports i used to hear from him or you know what was published from bilal muslim mission or i hear from others is a different thing from actually meeting the people who are the fruits of his hard work especially the sheikh when he talks about uh, you know this is the the land where shiaism started and he says it was uh, because of his you know visit and uh, hard work especially when they talk about the era immediately after his death that when he passed away unfortunately things were not meant in the same way it has taken some time for the organization to come back uh, and and the expression they have is that we felt yatim we still feel we are yatim and orphan after him late 80s when i was in canada i got invitation from some of the sheep communities in the caribbean region to visit them so i went to trinidad trinidad virgin islands and decided to also go and visit this community in guyana and it was very interesting for me that when our home latif ali he introduced me to his community his words were very moving for me he said we all know our spiritual father sayyid akhtar rizwi we are his spiritual children but this is his real child his son <laughs> has come to visit my father unfortunately never you know thought about it but never was able to visit them uh, but this is where i consider it to be the tawfiq from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somebody you know born in india moves up in in tanzania but is able to have an impact among the people so far away from here uh, in guyana that you know the shi community uh, link their root to him upon the uh, death of my father uh, latif ali sent me a message which was read in his uh, Arbaeen in, in Toronto program that we had 
where he says that, you know, uh, the student, Sayyid Akhtar, the teacher, and Latif Ali, the student, uh, although they met once in London in the first conference of Wabil, the Rabbit al Alam, Islami, where my father was one of the founders of it, with uh, along with uh, Shaheed Mahdi al Hakim, uh, Shahristani, as well as uh, Baharulu. And there he, he had a eulogy in English poetry where he says, although Sayyid Akhtar is no more, but his lions are still there, roaring in the jungles of Guyana, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Ali. You know, it's, uh, it's, and, and that, that's where I, I think, you know, this is where the issue of ikhlas and sincerity comes in. If that is there, you know, the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is always there. And he can do things that you cannot even imagine, means without any resources. There was, those days we didn't have emails or internet and this and that. All the correspondence was by postal system. Uh, but you could have an impact even by written words, uh, if you do it in the right way and with total uh, sincerity.